Welcome back, everybody, to Two Guys, Three Crowns, the podcast about what it's really like to live in Stockholm, Sweden. Join me, Sean, and my fellow American, Rodney, as we explore the good, the bad, and the just plain weird. Kudos, my hero, leaving all the mess. You know, my hero, the one that's on. There goes my hero. Watch him as he goes. I had to do a little tribute today with the uh, the news out of Colombia, as it were, that we all woke up to that Taylor Hawkins, the drummer of Foo Fighters, has mm. passed on to another plane. Yes, sir. So our uh yeah big hearts going out to uh the family and the band and yeah all the fans everywhere but that was that was a tough one man like uh the last time that it's been like so close something like that was when um the lead singer uh chester of lincoln park committed suicide it was right. just like ah uh, it's like i'm now in that stage of my life where the musicians that you grew up listening to they start uh disappearing which is always sad your stage <laughs> my stage yeah 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 no it is uh, uh it's tough and, and when it pops up like actors you know all of a sudden it just seems like they it's popping up more often yeah. and uh yeah it's it's tough man it is tough yeah i mean especially like uh there's the whole 27 thing, right? Like when they mm. hit 27, like they're so, you know, these like high flying artists, they're so, that's why they're such great artists is they're so like messed up in the head that, you know, they go out on benders with like drug overdoses or whatever. But like, yeah, yeah man, to like make it to make it, he was 50 years old about to play a show in Colombia. And then I'm like seeing, I'm getting like email updates from Stockholm live that the Rolling Stones are still touring. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, those guys, they can't stop taking the drugs because then they will die. <laughs> like, whatever you were taking in the 60s and 70s, you just got to keep it up. Like, yeah. that's what happened to Lemmy, man, of yeah. Motorhead. Like, he stopped doing, like, the whiskey every day, and then he's just, like, a month later, he's dead. It's just, like, that turns into your petrol. You what, what was up with Ju like, <laughs> George Burns? George Burns, like, smoked cigars every single day, and he lived to be a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, good. once you get, like your DNA must get encoded or something. And like, mm. then you just get like, man, I don't, you know, I know I have 10 years left, but what if I had 30 years left and I just did the right. vegan thing all of a sudden? Yeah. No, that's no, no, can't do it. Can't do it. But I think that there's a lot of people that end up being disappointed because we get those wake up calls every once in a while where like these super athletes, these people like in peak performance, um, yeah. you know, living right and exercising and, you know, doing everything right. And they're like, what happened to him? Oh yeah. He's gone. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well that yeah. like, I mean, not to sound crass or anything, mm. but like that, I, I mean, I guess it's similar with artists. It's just like the opposite end of the spectrum. Like you're pushing your body to the literal physical limits of what it can do. Right. Right. That's what it is to be a professional athlete. So like, yeah. Some of them, they're going to break down differently than others and some faster than others. But yeah, yeah, still, it's like, a, yeah, one of those things. Yeah. A lot of those people are pretty well pickled, though. I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they are well. well That's what uh, I mean. Like Mick Jagger has been probably legally dead for at least three decades. His corpse just seems to know how to get on stage and play the, like, you know, go dancing around. Hey man, if it works, just keep on, just keep on, keep on doing, <laughs> it's doing making what money you're for doing. somebody. So that's all you need to know. While we're on music, did you have time to check out the link at all that I sent you for the American? Song I did contest? not. And I will tell you why. So <laughs> please, please do. Yes, because it's a good story. And then I would need to know what this tv show is about so for those who aren't in stockholm the past week has been amazing weather like mid-atlantic kind of spring like mm -hmm. it's been like high of 14 celsius which is like 58 60 
Um, but then when the sun, you know, we always talk about the sun in Sweden, like it's at like this angle. So it feels way more intense. Right. Like in Miami, you feel like crisping your skin, but like in Stockholm, it's at such an angle that it like makes it feel probably, I don't know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it actually is. It's so weird. So like 15 really feels like 20 Celsius. Right. So everyone's been outside and blah, blah, blah. You know, let's go to the after work. Everyone's starting to get a little bit more social. And I'm mm-hmm. sitting here like it's false advertising people. We all know what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Well, Hinata and her co-workers did an after work and they're like, oh, you know, this spring is coming. We need to go do a barbecue. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, barbecue. Let's go do a barbecue. And they want to do uh, one. It's this big park in Naka. Uh, like this huge reserve with little lakes around and there's like a golf course Mm. built into it but like not like a country club golf course like a very natural golf course kind of thing right so we it took us 30 minutes to get to the station because we had to do the the little tram on the street the Tvarbanen right and then we had to get the green line out to Skarpnek and then from there we had to walk another 30 minutes through the woods and I'm like okay people like this was clearly planned by someone who doesn't have a two and a half year old, but we made it. The problem is we all woke up Saturday morning mm-hmm. and the temperature dropped a lot. Yeah. It was very cloudy Yeah, and it was very windy. Yes. And we all went, I feel like we all kind of like separated by several kilometers, not mm-hmm. able to look at each other face to face. And everyone kind of probably looked side to side and said, are we really doing this thing today? No one has said no yet. Right. So I guess we're doing it. Yeah. And it was like the, like just the momentum of not doing anything, which is quite Swedish, you know, mm, mm. just nothing happens. So then it happens, mm. man, we were out in the woods in Naka, like where we went to for this barbecue. Like it, I would have rather to be under a tree. Like in the middle of the trees, like trying to prevent a forest fire. Yes. Then where we ended up, it was like out in the field, the wind is blowing. It's like after a while, we couldn't feel our hands anymore. We're trying to roast these little hot dogs. The fire's going out. I'm like, and then I have Rodney texting me about, hey, man, check out this. I'm like headed back on the train. Mm -hmm. Dylan's like sleeping. He's like needs to change his diaper because it's definitely a number two. Right. And I'm just like, sorry for everyone else on the train because this is a stanky one. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then Rodney's like, hey, check out this TV show with Snoop Dogg and <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. I'm like, I don't care about anything like that right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, but I, I'm dying uh... to know what, how was it? <sighs> um... <laughs> Perfect. Well, it was. Um, it was kind of, it's kind of hard to, well, see, I went in trying to compare it, you know, because people, yeah, what had happened was because people, you know, we've talked about Eurovision, we've talked about in Sweden, Melody Festival, you know, and all of these shows have this rich, long history and, uh, you know, you've been doing it for years and the American song contest is just kind of like this brand new show. It just pops Which up. is the name of the show. Like it's actually called American Song Contest. Right. And if I understood <laughs> it, it, hey, and if I understood it correctly, they've split it up into four. I think it's four. I'm going to say four. So they just did the first episode with the first batch of states. And then they're going to do. Wait, like, it's people it's, in the U.S.? Yeah. It's but the it's American, Swedish TV. No. No, they're showing it on Swedish TV, but it's back in the States. Ah, okay. So it's like a show in the States, but we it's just happened the to States. Have bought the rights to air it here. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, well, and then they're actually, I guess they're, yeah, they're showing it. I went back and watched the replay, but, um, so I guess it's going to be for the next four weeks and I don't know how they, I'm sure that there was a memo that I missed about how the whole, you know, contest is, is set up. Um, you know, I like Snoop Dogg. I, I do. Uh, Kelly Clarkson. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm, I, I, I like them. They're entertainers. Um, I thought that the songs that they did do, um, you know, there's people representing 
like each of the different states. And I can't, I think it was like Idaho and it was like, they were just, they did, okay, okay. they did Wisconsin. So I, I get where your melody festival reference is coming in. So it's like Eurovision, but only the states of the U S exactly. And it's actually somebody that's been involved with melody festival and uh, um, Swedish gentleman. And I don't have any notes in front of me, but he went over to the States to sell this concept and has sold it. And is like behind this whole push to get the American song contest up and running. I'm sorry, um, America. We didn't want this kind of thing exported. Well, it, 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 the, <laughs> what had happened was, <laughs> no. Um, and well, one of the songs popped up. I'm watching the, I'm, I'm watching the show. Lynn is sitting on her, on, on her couch, <laughs> you know, and she's doing something on her iPad. And this guy gets up there and starts singing on stage and we're both kind of blown away because he's not moving very much, but his voice is just amazing. And I'm sitting there yeah. and I'm thinking, well, if this is the quality of the stuff they're going to be doing, this is, you know, this is actually pretty good. Um, okay. And, you know, Lana goes, wow, doesn't he sound like that guy? Like, uh, who was the guy with the really long hair? And I was like, uh, like Michael Bolton. She was like, yeah, it sounds Fabio? like, no, Michael Bolton. <laughs> she says, it sounds like Michael Bolton. And sure enough, it's Michael Bolton. It's Michael Bolton, and I think he was. <laughs> I think he was representing. If you got a record deal, you can't be competing in this stuff. Get out of here. Well, because I'm sitting and I'm thinking, is it like a halftime entertainment thing, or is he competing? And I don't know if I don't know if it was like Connecticut or Kentucky. It was whatever state that uh, that he was in. He sounded amazing. Um, and uh, so wait, is it like professionals or is it like amateur? Well, or is it a mix? That's the thing. I mean, I thought it was like amateur stuff, but if you look at Melody Festival, and there's a lot of professional singers that are competing, it's not like amateur stuff. I mean, it's people, yeah. Like, like I was reading the um, the woman who won this year, she had been on like the Swedish version of American Idol before and like other stuff, right? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's professional singers, but it um. Yeah, it blew me away that, that he was on there. Whatever song he sang was fantastic. Uh, the rest of the songs were were okay, but um, <laughs> but but what struck me is I'm thinking an American audience back in the states with a ton of TV options, a ton and a ton of musical. TV options with masked singers and buzzers and this and that and singing. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then it's like this new thing comes out. There's no real history, you know, behind it. It's just a new show. And I, I you know, it could be a, it could, who knows, who knows what's going to happen. This sounds but, uh, like it's like the UPN answer to American Idol. I, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be, or no UPN. Yeah. Now it's a what is it? Uh, C seventeen or whatever it is that they yeah. rebranded themselves as. But I mean, it, it's you know, it's professionally done and I mean, kind of what you would expect for an entertainment or a music show back in the states. And it's gonna be interesting to see. I've written to a couple people just to see, <laughs> just to see if they even watched it or if they knew it was on. I, I don't know how they promoted it. We're over here. We're in Stockholm. We have no idea how they promote it. Yeah, it's it probably or, a year old to begin with too. Like the yeah. way we get media over here from the States or from the UK or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, you know, it was fun. Um, Snoop is who he is. Kelly Clarkson was, uh, was extremely energetic and, and yeah. well, you have to pair someone extremely energetic next to Snoop Dogg because like you gotta offset the everyone around him is getting a contact <laughs> high. Guaranteed, like they must have given her like eight cups of coffee because like everyone that has to come into contact with Snoop Dogg, like right. he's just like, Hey man, yeah, you wanna have a little puff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, it's it, for breezy, uh, cheesy. Hey, the, yeah, it was was interesting was I think that the last guy that sang was from Rhode Island. Um, okay. And I, Hey, if nothing else, it's a great show for finding out where the States are because they have like a big, <laughs> cause they have a big map and you know, when oh, the, when the entertainment, you know, they'd like, 
do like a highlight of that state. So it is, there is kind of a- Because Americans are notoriously awful at geography. A geography lesson. And I, I found out that Rhode Island is only like 40 miles wide. So- Yeah. <laughs> you West Coast are you. I I just uh, I just I know that it's kind of uppish. Lena was like, "Where is Rhode Island?" And I said, "Well, you know where Canada is. It's kind of below Canada, but above." No, you know uh, what you do. You say, "You know New York City." Yes. You know Boston. Yeah. So in between those, there's a state that's mm. super white called Connecticut. Okay. And if suburbs came from anywhere, it came from Connecticut. And mm -hmm. then you go, like, somehow you go into the ocean, to the east somehow. Right, right, That's right. Rhode Island. But, okay. like, if you blink, you'll miss it. Okay. Hey, the guy was okay, though. I, I liked his, I dug his uh, okay. Okay song. He okay. did a ballad. Okay. He did a ballad. Um, no well, schlager music, though. No, but they did have a guy that was a country western rap artist that sang about boots and i'm just going to leave it at that you'll have to go back and watch it yourself um hmm. but you know it's american like, Any, the only thing is like the second you say country rap i'm like i'm gonna leave my horse to the old town road I'm gonna... yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was funny was uh, they they panned over to Snoop Dogg, and Snoop Dogg was was moving pretty, uh, was moving with the song. He kind of he got a dug. Yeah, so it was now. potent that night. It was potent. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you have you watched any any like what's the latest? We talked a little bit about West Side Story, and I'm just curious if you've been able to sneak in any of the. We movies. are two thirds of the way through West Side Story. We're okay. taking it in pieces, you know, because like the only time we actually get to get in the headspace to watch a movie is the weekend. But then we're like trying to stretch Dylan, especially on a Sunday to like, mm. I don't want to be woken up at six o'clock or six thirty in the morning on a Monday with Hanata Sean. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. So we try and push him as far as we can go right up to like podcast recording time. Right. So like after that, then you still have to cook dinner and then you're just like exhausted and like, just give me a glass of red wine and let me go to sleep kind of thing. So we've mm -hmm. been taking West Side Story in chunks. So we've been watching it. I think we're going to do the final like pieces tonight. Okay. But yeah, it's been really, it's so interesting to have seen i've seen it live yeah. not on broadway but off broadway and then i've seen like the movie from what what was it like the late 60s 60, and 70s I think it's like 61 yeah 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 so it's like you think you've seen it every way that it can possibly be presented right but it's still like to hear the music and it brings up that nostalgia and mm -hmm. you just like you realize holy crap I know every song of this entire movie. Like it's just yeah. imprinted on the back, the back of my brain and the way they've Spielberg was able to work with color and lighting in so many interesting ways. It like keeps your eyes on the screen, which is, yeah, yeah it's quite impressive. Actually. I was surprised. And, and it's fun to see uh, Rita Moreno in there. Yeah. You know, doing her, uh, and I'm not even going to say a cameo. I mean, she has a, a pretty, a pretty a pretty important role in the new film but um for for some reason yes i sang along every song that came on i sang along we we watched it last night the only thing that i i it felt longish it for some reason and i think it's like two and a half hours long and I don't know. Yeah, if that's it's... and that's not bad for a movie. No, that's it, pretty pretty average. It's not, but I I don't know if it's because I was so antsy to get to the musical numbers. Um... <laughs> Rodney's like, "Where's my jazz hands? On, I want to dance, baby. I want to be in America." <laughs> I, want... I mean, so I uh, that that was the only thing, and then um, the the main actor. Uh... Again, I need to write notes on this stuff. Whatever his name is, <laughs> Lena was like, has he been in anything else? And I'm like, yeah, Baby Driver. He was in a movie called Baby oh, Driver. Oh, that's right. I didn't even realize it. So I that's had- a, so true. So I had a, a little bit of a hard time, 
you know, disassociating him from that from that other role. Yeah, um, but like I can see I can see how he would be casted in a similar role. It's kind of mm-hmm. got like that. Like I can see the personality. No, the thing I can't get over and uh Drew turn your podcast off or like skip forward like a minute because the, the in this movie he looks exactly like my brother. Okay. And it's so weird. Hanatha says the same thing. I'm like, "Oh, here comes Drew again." Yeah. Like with the hairstyle and everything, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that yeah. is Dr. Drew right there, like to a T. Yeah. I'm like, it's like, D- Drew, you're already married. You have a kid. Like, right. what are you doing chasing Maria? Get out right, of here. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's so weird. Yeah, I mean, it, it was uh, it was good. We enjoyed it. It was uh, it was entertaining. Um, we had originally planned on watching it either with the entire family or at least mm. with Veronica, because Veronica is when Mamma Mia came out, she was watching Mamma Mia like constantly. It mm. was just constantly. And I kept on telling her, wait till you see this West Side story. You know, West Side story is this classic. You're gonna love it. You know, they've redone it. Um we'll see. The jury is still out because she didn't watch it with us. Um mm-hmm. but uh, we'll see. I don't know. The the other one that's up for awards that I've been wanting to see. So we saw the one from Netflix, the Don't Look Up. Yeah. Which is everyone says like, oh, it's an allegory for climate change or like an analogy. You know, I'm just like, no, that's too simple. It's an analogy for everything that's messed up about American society. That's what it is. Wow. But the one I've been dying to watch is Dune. So growing up. Okay. Growing up, we had the original on VHS cassette. And for our younger audience members, go ahead, pause the podcast, Hmm. go to the Google God and search for VHS. You'll figure it out. So, like, we watched it all the time. My dad had, like, Chapter House Dune. Hmm. He had a bunch of the books and all that stuff. So I remember watching it with Sting and all all these people. Just like, and uh, what was it? Captain Picard was in that, too. Mm Mm-hmm in that old version. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, how did they like update it to be more modern? Because it was like the peak of like 19 late eighties video CGI technology, Mm -hmm. which is to say it was awful. (laughs) Uh, uh. Like the, the CGI kind of stuff, but like I could only imagine what they can do nowadays. And then I think the score was that Hans Zimmer or was it, um, Trent Reznor. Now I'm getting confused, but yeah, like everything about it seems yeah. really, really polished. So, yeah. but that's one of those things that's like you have to sign up to HBO because then HB Warner is the distributor mm. and all that stuff. I'm like, ah, people, just like let me watch stuff for as cheaply as possible. Right. Yeah. I uh, we watched Dune, or I watched Dune. I can't remember if Lena Lena might have watched Dune with me. I can't remember if that was does it one pass of the three hour mark or does it stay within it? Um. Let's put it this way. There is obviously going to be a continuation. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the book is, what, well, like 800 pages or something. Yeah, but if you compare it to the first movie, the original movie that came out, and you compare it to this movie, and you're looking at your watch going, wait a minute, how are they going to fit everything that was <laughs> left? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah. So there was like there was like three minutes left, and I'm looking at my watch going, there's no way. There's no way. Like, he hasn't learned how to ride a worm yet. Like what? This, yeah, well, <laughs> this movie's not going to work. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, got it. Uh, got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's that's the only that's the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about that. We just started <laughs> a, a we just started watching a new series on Apple Plus, and it's called Pachinko. And it like is Pachinko, like the Japanese casino like the Pachinko game. machine. Pachinko machine, right? Okay, okay. And and it is uh, the movie itself is about uh, four generations of a Korean family from I believe nineteen forty something. You see, so when so everyone knows we text each other about what we're going to talk about, make like a little outline before the show. And this when wasn't on me, it. Like your <laughs> topics, it said pachinko, like a few movies that you've watched recently, right. and pachinko, and instantly I right. thought of Squid Game. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's um, <laughs> like yeah. I've never heard of this movie, but something says South Korean weird trippy 
human dynamics about this. So you know my mom was a flight attendant. <laughs> my mom, my yes. mom occasionally brought home stuff from her travels. It could be from different places. It could be food items. It could be, uh, you know, little trinkets and it could be this, it could be that. I think that I'm probably one of the only persons that had a pachinko machine. My mom brought back. You had a pachinko machine. A pachinko machine. I had no idea what it was. I just knew that all of a sudden I had (laughs) one. Now the electrical stuff didn't work, of course. So, you know, like flinging the balls and, you know, the seeing the stuff kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that was, uh, I got to say that I I was going to say that I was the only kid on my block with a pachinko machine, but I might have been the only person in Northern California with a pachinko machine. Well, actually, I don't know, because you have a lot of uh, transplants over there from East Asia. Yeah. So you never know. But like, no, what's the other casino thing that they always play? The it's like bingo, where they mark the card. Kino, Kino, okay. That's like an East Asian casino game, kind of gambling weirdo yeah. thing too. But yeah, pachinko. It's like I remember in the eighties when I was a kid growing up, like when I was like five years old. Like, no, it must like they couldn't have lasted that far into the nineties. So I mm-hmm. must have been real young. And I remember watching Saturday morning cartoons, right? And then you would see these two kids dressed in leather jackets. And it was all about Crossfire and the song Crossfire, you'll get caught up in the crossfire. And there's like, it's like Rock'em Sock'em robots, but Uh instead of robots boxing each other, you're pulling this awful plastic trigger, Uh, shooting these little pachinko pellets at each other. Yes. Yes. I remember that. I remember that. (laughs) (laughs) And I remember I thought my friend, my neighbor was so cool because he had one until we use it. And I'm like... This feels awful. My finger's going to get cut off. This is yeah. horrible. But that was also the good old days when it was like, hey, put your face right next to it when I pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah, know? see this little BB? I'm aiming yeah, right for your right eyeball. It. Yeah, it was okay. There was no safety precautions or warnings on Well, that was uh, back before the days of the woman spilling McDonald's coffee on herself. So yes. anything went. <laughs> right. Hey, speaking of anything goes, I need to get in something before we go at it, like hang it up for the weekend. Yes. I'm going to keep it as clean as possible. Uh Uh-oh. I know. I think I know where we're going. You know exactly where I'm going. Why is PostNord so bad at their (laughs) jobs? Like, I don't understand how it's 2022. They're the official postal service of Sweden. Mm. And they're so, like, known for being awful. Like, who is running this business? Like, let's give a little backstory. I order, like, a little small order from Zalando. You know, Mm -hmm. a couple t-shirts, a couple little, like, bracelets, accessories kind of thing. Like, I'm thinking, like, I don't want to go, like, too crazy that it's going to require a big box. Because once it's a big box, oh, you know, you're going to have to go, like, two kilometers away to go to, like, some random eco or post nord pickup point. So I'm right. like, okay, this stuff could theoretically fit into like, you know, those plastic envelope kind of things. Yeah. 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 So like all that stuff, like t-shirts and a couple bracelets that can all fit in the same thing. Come on now. And Zalando's like, Oh, like, thanks for your order. We're going to split it apart because of, I guess Zalando's just like a distributor kind of mm-hmm. thing. And they'll give you like discounts when they have a discount, but it's coming from other importers. So that it's like an Amazon in a way, right? They're a retailer. So like some stuff comes from them. Other stuff comes from other people. Sure. So sometimes they have to split the order apart. Yeah. No yeah. worries. Okay. They're like, okay, it's going to be delivered. I ordered what? Like last this past Monday. They're like, okay, it's going to be delivered between Wednesday and Friday. I'm like, oh, Oh. Zalando. Okay, you're very confident right now. Let's see about this. (laughs) And I, right, like the next day, next morning, right away, I've got like Post Nord updates about like, oh, we've registered a package and Mm. blah, 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 blah. And then like, like we have updates of your package, which basically means they've some other employee just boop, scanned it. Right. And then like the system says, we have an update. And you look at your app and literally nothing has changed. And I'm like, "Uh Mm uh-huh. Yeah. 
there's an update about my package all right so it gets to be like they're like okay it's going out for delivery select how you would like your package to be delivered in one on piece. wednesday <laughs> between 5 p.m and 10 p.m another 10 p.m delivery right uh, you remember the flowers yes valentine so already my red flags are going up i'm like post nord don't get sassy with me mm -hmm. i don't have the patience anymore mm. but they're like okay would you like it to i had selected home delivery originally when i did the checkout would you like to keep it at home delivery for zero kroner would you like to come and pick it up at our distribution center in oh. Althue oh. for zero kroner and i'm okay. like you want me to go all the way out to Althue to some truck depot and pick it up? Man, I distinctly remember having done this already with <laughs> Ikea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. And having to, like, call an Uber into the truck depot because yeah. it was too heavy. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, I, I know exactly where it is. I don't want anything to do with that. Right. And then the third option was collect it from a service point in two to three days and pay another 125 kroner. Ooh. And I'm like... You should be paying me money to do that option. Yeah. That's like charging me extra money to have the opportunity yeah. to select the middle seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. On a 737. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Yeah. What are uh, we doing here, people? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, no, keep it as is. And then they're like, oh, you know, you can update your information if there's anything you need to put, like a, a door code mm -hmm. or anything like that. I'm mm -hmm. like... I'm leaving zero to chance with these mm -hmm. people because guaranteed, like the guy just comes up at nine 59, he tries to open the door and it's locked. Like yep. every other door yep. in Sweden right. is going to be locked from the outside. And he's going to say, Oh no, well they weren't here. We so tried. I'm just going to take we it tried. to whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We tried. You have to come pick it up at Alfa now and walk in between the semi tractor trailers to pick up right. your package. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I'm like, okay, set it to deliver. Even if I'm not at home, deliver to the apartment door. I put in the port telephone, which is mm. my name. I'm the only one under D. So mm. they just have to find my name and they call it and I open it with my cell phone. Right. And then I'm like, okay, so everything seems to be going smoothly. The night of 5 p.m. hits, I'm getting a couple little text updates like your package is moving, mm -hmm. but there's no like tracking. Like, no. you know how the groceries, you can like see the truck when it's exactly. getting closer and closer. Right, and, I'm, like, right. and my neighborhood, Google Maps always sends them down the wrong street and then they get all confused. They don't realize they can drive along the water. And then I see them turn around eight times and I'm just like shouting at my phone, like, just go this way. Just right. go this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I'm like prepared for that kind of thing. And I see them getting closer. Then it's like four stops, three stops. Oh. Ooh, and ooh, then ooh, ooh, it ooh, hits ooh. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. I can see the truck going all getting closer to my neighborhood. I can see the truck now on the screen. It's getting closer and closer and closer and closer. The second 9 p.m. hits, mm. your order is out for delivery. I can't see the truck anymore. What? What? I'm like, bro, yeah. someone stole my, my stuff. <laughs> someone straight up stole my stuff. And then I'm like trying to like look up customer service like... 10 p.m. Boom passes. I'm like, that's it. Here we go. Karen mode engaged. Oh, no. Like, I'm going white woman on you now. Right, right, yeah. Okay. So then I'm like, where's my customer service representative? Trying to like the chat is closed, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh it's been since 6 p.m., which like, okay, I expect. But then there's like a a call, like a phone number that you can call till like midnight. And I was like, wow, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, got to respect right. that. Ooh. You know, I'm going to try. Give it a call. Let's yeah. see what happens. And then the second I'm like, everything is Swedish. And they're like, for English, plus blah, 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 blah. And I press it. And then they're like, we're only open till 5 p.m. on weekdays. I'm like, you <laughs> mother. <laughs> <laughs> for English speakers. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where's my stuff, bro? Like, right. where is it? Someone stole my stuff. my stuff. So then, like, I'm... Um, on to the fate like their facebook profile like to submit like another complaint right 
I'm on Twitter. Like my one reason why I still have my password for Twitter, right. just to like get on there and like, start complaining with people, because yeah. that's all it is. It's just customer complaints on Twitter. Yeah. And then like in the morning after I drop off Dylan, I'm on the boat back, and I'm like, call this customer support number. Yeah, I want to talk to someone in English. Representative, please. Representative. Yeah. Yeah. And then I get a hold of some guy, and he's like. Well, you were given a notification too early. Mm. It did, it was in a uh, Segel story and it didn't come to our distribution center in Alphwit. So you were given a home delivery message too soon. I'm like, bro, that's not real. Mm -hmm. I could see it on the truck that was out for delivery. Mm -hmm. And Zalando gave me the message that it was supposed to del be delivered. Actually, Wednesday was the final day that it was supposed to be delivered. I'm right. like, I knew Zalando was too confident. Like, what you're telling me, it's just not real. It's not real. Mm. Like, oh, we sent you a notification too early. First of all, then figure out your system. Why are you sending me a notification too early? And second of all, how is that a thing? I saw it on the truck. It was three blocks away, man. It was three blocks away. <laughs> and then someone didn't want to deliver it. So I go through this whole thing and like I'm screaming at this guy on the phone and he's just like repeating the same thing. And I'm just like, I'm just going out. I'm like, man, you people like, do you realize how bad your company is? Like it's 2022. Everyone buys stuff online. Mm -hmm. Like our options are post nord that maybe it'll show up or db huenker which is like a german dhs well dhs is german but like db schwenker is like uh like fedex or ups but i think they're german mm -hmm. but then they're also french canadian because they all speak english when they arrive but when you're talking to them on the phone they refuse to speak english to you they're like right. uh oh uh, 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 uh. Uh, English not good <laughs> and then they just do their spiel at you and then when you actually pick it up I can tell it's the same person from their voice right. and they're like yeah hey man so yeah have a nice day yeah thanks uh, have a good weekend I'm like what bro like you can speak English anyway so like how are these people so like there's no impetus for them to want to be a better service and the kicker on everything. So they, I go through the Facebook messenger, through the people on the phone and they're like, okay, well, the, you know, kind of, they're saying there's nothing I personally can do. You'll get a message when it's going to be delivered at some point. And I'm like, great, because otherwise I'm going to have to call my credit card company and claim fraud on Zalando and you. Right. And like, so I get one piece of the delivery yesterday, Saturday. And they're having to use the port telephone to get in. Hmm. And I'm like, how is it that someone delivering a box and the box was tiny, like pretty small, mm -hmm. like you could squash it and just fit it right into the mail slot. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it post Nord? The official postal service of Sweden needs to use my port telephone number, my door phone mm -hmm. code thing to get into the building. When you deliver mail every day <laughs> and on top of that, some random dude can come into my building every day, despite everyone's mailbox saying no advertising. He shoves these awful newspapers in every mailbox. Nobody wants this. What is going on? What is this? Sean, are you upset about your delivery service? I like who do I have? Like I told, I told the per like the only progress I got was with the person I was texting all day Thursday on the Facebook Messenger. Like she was handling multiple customers, so it was like we would text and then like 20, 30 minutes would go by right. and like it would progress. But I'm like, whose neck do I have to strangle to get you people to like do anything? Like I'm like, you don't realize. Like she's like, do you? I mean, it's just so many things like they mm. doorbell ditch you. They're like, oh, knock on the door. Oh, I tried. Like they knock on the wall. They, like who's knocking on a door? And then they say, OK, you have to pick it up from Ika in two days. I'm like, bro, I said I paid for it to be delivered to my house. Yeah. And then the representative from Postlord is like, well, do you have the uh, shipment ID so I can look into this case for you? I'm like, 
You don't need a shipment ID. Everyone knows you suck. <laughs> like, what are you doing about that? Everyone hates you. <laughs> like, what are we doing here, man? And like, it's 2022. On that note, system Bolaget needs to be start selling cold beers. Honestly, like, let's get with the like, the bleepity bleepity bleep program. Come on, people. Woo! That will do it for this week's episode. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. As always, give us a like, a review, a five-star rating, wherever you're listening to this podcast right now. It helps oh so much. Definitely check out our Instagram as well. We always have cool, fun, interesting things going on over there. And yeah, I guess I got to get down off this soapbox now. But seriously, PostNord, I hate you. For everyone else, be sure to come back here next time for more Two Guys, Three Crowns. Three Crowns.